Hey there, friends. I just wanted to hop in here and say Merry Christmas to everybody if you celebrate Christmas. If you don't celebrate Christmas, then Happy Holidays, and I hope you're all having a gorgeous weekend. That all said, I wanted to do something a little different to wrap up this week, as this week has been nothing but true scary stories and creepypasta aren't something I do on my channel anymore. I wanted to do a story that was written by a very good friend of mine, Charlie Blackmore aka Beautiful Nightmare. I've done so much of her work. Her work is always fantastic, and I genuinely appreciate everything she writes for me and just that I'm able to use. Um, and she's a really good person. Really good person. Like, a really great friend to have in my life. Um, that said, I wanted to also put a quick warning here. Uh, Charlie likes her graphic imagery, and I'm totally cool with that. I get where she's coming from. She's very good at it in how she writes her stories. So really, really quick add in here um this story graphic so if you don't like graphic gore violence don't listen to the story um if it doesn't bother you well then you're in for one hell of a treat this story is awesome and she wrote it for the channel for christmas so yeah christmas special on the channel yay uh after this i'm going to bed and i'm going to sleep for two days so all that said friends today's story is holiday massacre by Charlie Blackmore, a.k.a. Beautiful Nightmare. Crimson liquid seeps into the wooden floor, trickling down the wall of the room below where a man lay upon the beige carpet. His eyes are glossed over, his mouth wide open, and chest agape, all because he left the window unlocked. A shadowy figure kneels beside the corpse, admiring the ghoulishness of the scene before them as they slowly lift their arm, causing metal to shine in the small sliver of moonlight illuminating the room. The blade of the figure's axe slams down onto the neck of their victim. Blood squirts onto the carpet as the head rolls toward the wooden door. Heavy breathing can be heard, as footsteps slowly land on the hardwood floor, causing the boards to groan underneath the person's weight. The shadowy figure reaches down, scoops up the head, and places it in a large red sack before opening the door and stepping into the hallway. A little girl stands before the figure, staring up at them, with wide eyes upon realizing who is in her house. Uncle Nick? The little girl asks. Shouldn't you be asleep, Molly? The figure softly inquires. Yes, Molly nods. Please, don't punish me. Ho 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 ho. There will be no punishing tonight, little lady. Run back to bed now. Okay. The figure lurks just outside of the little girl's bedroom waiting until she begins to snore so that they can open the door to her room. Molly slumbers peacefully underneath her plush, pink duvet. She doesn't move when the floorboard creaks, or when the person knocks over the lamp sitting on her nightstand. The axe is brought above the head of the shadow, hesitating before hastily slamming it down on the little girl's neck. The pink duvet is stained with blood in a matter of seconds. Like the father, her head is placed within the red sack as the figure leaves the room. Poor little Molly had done her best at being a good girl this year, only to be rewarded with this, much like her father had. The figure moved from the hallway and into the next bedroom, taking the heads of Molly's older brother Stephen her older sister, Cassandra. The twins had been bad teenagers this past year, drinking and driving without giving a care about responsibility. The twins had dabbled in drugs as well as other activities that should remain untouched until they are adults. However, the teenagers deserved the punishment brought to them. Their heads are tossed in the red sack without a care, before the figure leaves the room and scurries down the hallway, stopping outside the last door on the right. Hinges of the wooden door slowly creak open, causing the person in the twin-sized bed of the guest room to stir. 
Her blonde hair is poking out of the covers as her chest steadily rises and falls, which causes the figure to stop dead in his tracks. The mother is a beautiful woman in her mid-thirties. Her blue-green eyes captivate anyone who dare to look at her. She's quite the wonderful mother that everyone thinks her to be. However, she isn't the wife that everyone was led to believe. The Mother Margaret is a harlot. A woman who does just about anything to get away from her family, even if it means hurting others in the process. Margaret is used to having everything go according to her plans, except she wasn't expecting this plan to have unraveled, and neither had the shadow. The shadowy figure steps into the light of the fireplace to reveal the red and white hat sitting atop the snow-white colored hair. The long white beard hangs down to the person's chest, while the rest of him is clothed in a red suit and black boots to match. The entirety of the outfit is completed with the red sack full of heads. Santa, he was not a vengeful man. But never had he seen a person as bad as this woman. She abused her family whether she knew it or not. She was the epitome of horrible. And it was time for her to pay for the sins that she had committed. Santa tightly grips the handle of the axe as he raises his arms high above his head just as Margaret opens her eyes. She screams loudly at the sight before her, yet the weapon is quickly slammed down severing the left forearm of the woman. Blood squirts onto the dark purple blanket as the woman cries out for help. She begs for her life to be spared while the man continues to chop limb after limb from her body. Like the others, the head of Margaret is picked up from the wooden floor and carelessly tossed into the red sack. Nicholas slowly makes his way down the hallway, descending the staircase and scurries up the chimney in the living room. Heavy footfalls on the roof, and the neighing of reindeer can be heard as ho, ho, ho is bellowed into the night. The early morning sunlight shines through the parted curtains, causing someone to stir in the king-sized bed sitting in the middle of the room. A young man sits upright in the bed, stretching his tired limbs before tossing his feet over the edge and standing up. The cold wood of the floor against his bare feet causes the man to shiver. He quickly grabs the robe from the bedpost, drapes it around his body, and heads out of his bedroom, only to see a trail of dark liquid leading from each room and down the hallway. Frantic, the man checks every room only to let out a blood-curdling scream at the sight of his dismembered family members. Who on earth would want to harm his family? Who in the hell would dare to break into the house during the night and ruin this joyous holiday? The man quickly dials 911, explaining to the dispatcher that something terrible had happened to his family. The police arrive about 20 minutes later. Two officers take the man's statement about what happened and how he found his family members. He explained that he had slept throughout the night due to being drunk and did not hear a single sound that would indicate his family was in trouble, nor did he hear anyone screaming. The police officer, unsure of what to do, handcuffed the young man and told the paramedics to transport him to the nearest hospital for psychiatric care. The police watch as all of the bodies are placed into black bags and hauled away as the forensics team gathers as much evidence as possible. Unable to determine what exactly had happened the previous night, they concluded the young man was responsible for this holiday massacre due to his intoxicated state. The joyous holiday ended up in a bloodbath and an innocent man who had lost his family was suspected of the crimes. No one would ever suspect dear old Saint Nick. He would continue to collect names off his naughty list for the next 364 days.